All right, good evening, everyone. I'm RJ, and in the team, we have Jonathan, another RJ, Swat, Vince, Emil, and Wasim. And we are Team Untouchable. And for our senior design project, we are tasked in creating a non-touch suggested control system, which is sponsored by Morris Sorello in San Diego State. So let me set up the scenery. Imagine yourself inside a museum, and as you approach an interactive display, you notice it's a touch screen, but it's covered with boogers and nacho cheese. Would you still touch it? I know I wouldn't. Now imagine yourself walking around in the same museum and have a display turned on when you approach it, and from a couple feet away, away from all that nasty stuff, you could interact with it. This is what we built. From applications in the medical field where a surgeon can remain sterile while looking through a patient's file, all the way to controlling the TV in the comfort of your own home with using simple gestures. Now many of you, be, now many of you may be thinking, but RJ, aren't the devices that do this out in the market already? Of course, and I'll talk about the two most popular ones, the Leap Motion and the Xbox Connect. The Leap Motion could capture hand gesture pretty accurately and has a fast response time, but lacks in the sensing range, where the sensing range is only up to a couple of inches. Whereas the Xbox Connect provides a wider sensing range, but suffers from a delay response. So, for our project is to address these issues and to create a system that has a sensing range up to two to four feet and will have minimal delay in response time. So I might pass it over to Emil to explain our hardware design for our project. Thank you, RJ. Oh. So most of the products that attempt to do gesture control suffer from delayed response time. This is partly because almost all of the, the background noise reduction is done at the software level. And this, of course, requires lots of data processing. In our system, the filtering happens at the hardware level, and this allows the software to mainly focus on just recognizing gestures. This makes for a much more responsive and efficient system. Behind me, you'll see some of the main hardware components. The Raspberry Pi acts as the brain of the entire system. It takes data from multiple different sensors and uses them together to recognize gestures. It's connected to a monochromatic global shutter camera, and this camera is what we use to actually capture these images and gestures. Uh, we also have a PIC microcontroller that allows us to synchronize 10 high-powered infrared LEDs with the shutter of the camera, and we have Fresnel lenses in front of these LEDs so that we can choose where we want the light to be dispersed. We have a bandpass filter applied to the camera that can only see in the wavelength of these LEDs so that these components together make a uh, very robust background noise reduction system. We also have two ultrasonic sensors, and these sensors tell the rest of the system to turn on when they recognize that someone is in the range of our product. Next slide. So in our design, we wanted it to be as unobtrusive as possible. We don't even want the user to recognize that it's there. We have a dark acrylic material in the front that transmits up to 90% of infrared light, but from your perspective, it just looks like a thin black screen. Our product can sit underneath or above a TV or monitor, and to keep it as thin as possible, we designed a slight curvature at the back so that you can place some of the components behind the TV and out of your sight. So to talk some more about the uh, software of our product, I'm going to hand you guys over to SWAT. Thank you. Thank you, Emil. Everyone just now you have heard the uh, hardware aspects of our system. I will briefly go over the software side. To begin with, we use ultrasonic sensors to detect if a person is within range. If the person is a little bit too far back or too close forward, our system will readjust the person to the right spot. Then our LEDs will begin blinking allowing our optics to be able to capture images and use these frames for image processing. During the time of our development, we discovered that our system suffered from a severe lag. Our optics would not be able to detect images for a good eight seconds, making it unusable. To overcome this, we implemented multi-threading where we took advantage of the Raspberry Pi's multi-processor. With this, we reduced latency and increased our response time allowing the camera to be able to detect images uh, very smoothly at this point. Now, we are able to capture the hand just fine. So then we take the images, the frames with the hand, threshold it, and draw contours around it, who RJ will go into detail later. And with these contours, we are able to now perform different types of gestures depending on what the user does. So we have some various uh, gesture control uh, who RJ will explain later. But for now, as you can imagine, we the image processing is very crucial to part of our system. I will now pass it on to Vince, who will talk about the timing and functionality of our camera. Thank you, Slot. To elaborate a little bit more on what Emil said about our hardware background subtraction, I want to explain a few key concepts about our system. Our system is using a point-grade Chameleon 2 camera. 
It's global shutter, it's monochromatic, and it has a frame sync signal. A frame sync signal is a signal that the camera will output signifying that it's capturing a brand new frame. Here is a, a picture of rolling shutter versus global shutter. Our camera uses a global shutter. As you can see in a rolling shutter, a rolling shutter takes each individual rows of pixels as a function over time, while in a global shutter, it takes all immediately. Here is an example. As you can see in the rolling shutter, when the fan blade spins, you can see that the fan blade gets distorted, while the global shutter looks completely fine. This is also exemplified in our animated uh, clip of the wheel. When the wheel starts spinning faster, the rim gets distorted, while in the global shutter, it looks, looks all good. Another thing to understand is the light spectrum. All, most cameras will be able to see in, our, in this visible light spectrum range, including ours. What makes ours different is we remove the Bayer filter. The Bayer filter is a filter placed in front of the camera that uh, re removes the infrared light that the camera can see. We remove this Bayer layer and put our own bandpass filter into, this, uh, into the camera, restricting the light to be at a wavelength that we want it to be at. Now to put everything together, our camera runs at 30 frames per second, so each frame is roughly 33 milliseconds. We have our LEDs controlled uh, with the frame sync signal firing at every other frame. Our shutter is also going at this rate. This is because we take the first frame with the LEDs uh, on, where you can see their hand, uh, subtract it by the second frame where the LED is off so it's completely blank, blank to generate a third image where you can see that the majority of the background is gone, but you can see my hand extremely well. Next, I'll pass it off to RJ to uh, demonstrate our hand gesture control system. Thank you, Vince. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how our gesture control system program works. Well, let, allow me to explain in detail. To start off, the program takes the a frame from the Chameleon 2 camera and then thresholds the image, which basically means that it turns the image into sim a simple black and white to determine where, where the user's hand will be. It then takes that threshold an image and then locates the contours of the user's hand to determine how many fingers the user is holding up. In our project, we've had the program recognize four gestures. If the user is holding up five fingers, they'll be able to use their hand to freely move a mouse cursor wherever they please. If the, the user holds up three fingers, that will stimulate a left click on the screen. And if the user continues to hold the three fingers up, they'll be able to drag select. Finally, if the user holds up four fingers and then swipes left or right quickly, they'll be able to use the left and right arrow keys, which can be used to scroll through a photo gallery. Next, I'm going to pass it off to Wasim, who will talk about how the product will be powered. Thank you, Arjun. So how is our overall system powered? To power our overall system, we first thought about using a wall socket and an AC-DC buck converter to get the 12 watts our system needed. But then our sponsor suggested a much simpler option, and that is the power over Ethernet method, which gives us 15.4 watts of power per PoE port and allows us to submit data and power through one single Ethernet line. And basically how this works is you get an Ethernet cable connected to one PoE port and then get the other end of the Ethernet cable connected to a splitter, which will then drop, which will then split the power and data lines. Next slide. And here is the circuit that will, be, that will be providing the illumination for our system. <coughs> As you can see here, we have the PIC16F1834 microcontroller, which will be generating the 3.3 microsecond pulses for the 30 frames per second that our camera will provide. We have this capacitor, resistor, and shocky dog combination here to protect our switch from staying in the on state and blowing out our LEDs. We use simple capacitor charge and discharge equations to size that resistor and this resistor here and that capacitor to make our LEDs extremely bright and illuminate our system. Lastly, we have that shocky diode there for reverse polarity protection and to protect our LEDs from blowing out. Next, I will pass it over to John to talk about lighting. Thank you, Wasim. <clears throat> to further explain, uh, to further improve the signal to noise reduction in our system, we're passing the LED light through a Fresnel lens. And how a Fresno lens works is, rather than light dispersing throughout the entire room, the, running it through a Fresno lens will allow the light to run parallel to each other, and thus creating a frame. In this frame, we'll be able to illuminate the user's hand while eliminating the background in our system. Now, some of you guys may be wondering why we have our LEDs floating above uh, our PCB board. The reason for this design 
was rather than having to angle our entire housing unit to just shine on the person's hand, we were able to, we would be able to angle or move the box that the Fresno lens creates by tilting these LEDs here. Now for our hardware testing, we have three very simple components in our system. We have a camera, some LEDs, and, the, and some ultrasonic sensors. For us to test the camera, it was simple plug and play. Using the Flycapture software development kit, we were able to change the camera settings, whether we wanted more light to come in into our system, and how fast we wanted the shutter to open and close, which would allow us to synchronize better with the LEDs. Now for our LEDs, in order to test those, we were able to use the PIC microcontroller, which was able to receive a frame sync signal from the camera. From there, the PIC would output a signal close, uh, to the switch, allowing our LEDs to pulse at five amps for 3.3 milliseconds. The timing of our LEDs is crucial to our system. The, the less amount of light in our system, the better uh, results we would get. As for our ultrasonic sensors, we had the PIC trigger the ultrasonic sensor, and it would send out a sound wave, and uh, from there, time, it would tell a distance in time as how, how long it took for the signal to, uh, the sound wave to return. And from there, one microsecond is one millimeter in distance, and we'll be able to redirect the user to the sweet spot in our system. Now let me quickly go over our, over our team's budget. Thanks to Morris Cirillo, we were allocated $1,500 to complete the project. Throughout the development of our project, we were able to buy multiple cameras, sensors, and other components. At the end of our project, we were left with a whopping $20 in our budget. Now let me pass it off to RJ to talk about our team's milestones. Thank you, Jonathan. For our project, we had three major goals. The first main goal was to have the camera perform and detect gesture control. The second main goal was to have the hardware components fully operating and fully finished, such as the housing unit being 3D printed and the LED printed circuit boards fully working and all that good stuff. And the third main goal was to have the software and hardware fully integrated into a product. From the figures shown, we accomplished a lot of these goals within the past two weeks. So we were cutting it pretty close. Uh, now we're gonna show you our final product in action playing tic-tac-toe. And we are the X's. And we lost. <laughs> As you all have seen today, our final product will allow users to fully interact with the monitor without the need to touch. So with our device, the power is in your hand. <laughs> Thank you for listening to our presentation. Oh.